Um, well, we traveled as a family back in 2009. Um, and we, Jimmy and I, decided that it was time for something new for our family. So we um, left the career that he'd been building for 14 years. And we knew that we wanted to travel internationally with the kids. And we were looking for um, a volunteer opportunity that would accommodate children. And we found ourselves in Fiji. Um, we'd been there once before for a work trip, um, but, and we'd always wanted to go back. And there was a program um, happening on Voro Voro Island. And um, so we traveled there. We had three children. And we participated in the, on the project on Voro Voro for 10 weeks. And while we were there, we took um, project director uh, positions within that project. Um, when that project ended at the end of 2010, um, we promised the family, we'd worked with them, with the Fijian family, for over a year at that point, and we'd really seen what they could do, and we had really grown um, close with that community, and also had heard what their dreams for their, um, the future of their island. And the... Um the community in Fiji where we stayed is is in the northern part of Fiji, and it's a very rural area. And the one of the most wonderful things about them is that they're so open and hospitable, and they'll just welcome you right into their home and and uh, take you in as a member of their family, basically. Uh, which was one of the things that we found so. Um, so in exciting about them. So while we were there, we we basically lived with them, worked with them. Um, we we spent all of our time on the island, just learning about their culture and uh, yeah, just being just a part of their part community. In, just taking part in whatever was happening and and learning and listening a lot and telling a lot of stories. There's a landowning family that lives on Voro Voro, and the chief, who is the, the tribal leader of the family, he spent a lot of time talking with us about what, his, um, what he wanted his legacy to be. And, and what he wants to do is he, there was already an existing village on the island that served as a, t a tourism destination for travelers, and he wanted to build the island up in a way that preserved their culture. Um, he didn't, wasn't willing to sacrifice his culture in the way that some of the uh, communities in the south of Fiji that's very much developed and tourist, touristy. Um, he wanted to be able to create a model that, that people would be able to come and observe their way of living and their culture and not not sacrifice their land, not sacrifice their their heritage. They want something that can last for generations mm -hmm. so that when this chief is gone, the next chief can can continue to have this to pass on to his children and, and grandchildren. Basically how it works is that we have, um, we have our trained staff who fulfill different um, different roles within the project. They might be the boat captain or the cook or the um, cultural expert. And each one of those people have a, an apprentice that works with them. It might be someone who's less experienced from the local village. And that apprentice's job is to learn um, everything that that primary employee has to teach them. Um, and it's about, and because we're like a living cultural history um, village, they're learning a lot about their per, their their tribal history and about their their culture, and then they're able then to share that with the Western travelers who come over to stay. Um, and as they learn the skills that they need for that position, um, and they can start to fulfill more of that, then that frees up that primary employee to take part in business education, and they're paired with a mentor who will help them to create business goals of their own, um, launching their own small business in the community. It's, it's, the intent is to equip them, and then also through the business training and mentorship program, equip the larger community to be able to utilize the tourism industry, because um, the Fijian government is actively promoting the um, the expansion of tourism to the north. So they already have a wonderful idea and they've got a wonderful heritage, they've got a wonderful culture that they want to share with the world and we're just helping them to uh, 
to learn how to do that. And the way that we have it set up, the way that, um, you know, they, over the next 10 years, they will be trained and will be working closely with us to learn how to operate the business. And, and as they hit benchmarks, the partnership shares, the ownership of the company um, transfers into their favor. So that by the end of the 10-year period, and they've reached all the benchmarks, um, now it's 90% owned by us, 10% by them. Um, by the end, it will be 90% owned, Fijian owned, and then 10% owned by us. Well, um, I guess as far there's there's a couple different uh, a couple different angles to the sustainability part. Um, as far as on the island itself, uh, there is um, as I said, there's already kind of an infrastructure set up. There's a village there. Um, there's water catchment, and uh, so all of the fresh water on the island comes from rainwater catchment, and there are storage tanks, and then we also have composting toilets, which are um, are used to help to fertilize the gardens because it's very sandy soil. And in the in the time since the compost toilets have been there, they've actually uh, been able to create quite a thriving garden on the island, uh, and so. Being able to spread that, uh, spread that knowledge around adds to the sustainability, not just on Vora Vora, but in the local community. There's another island, a neighboring island that the, the same chief uh, oversees. And so now they're actually, uh, they've built some compost toilets on the neighboring island, and people are starting to use that, uh, that knowledge um, to to help in their gardening and their farming because these um, the communities there are primarily farmers and fishers and so um, that's been a big part of it and then from an economic standpoint um, as Jenny mentioned earlier we have a uh, the the way the primary employee program is set up uh, we will equip them with small business um, mentorship so that they can take uh, once they're through working on the island then they will part of that program is that they will will have a fund matching program set up to where they will take part of their wages put that away and will match those wages and with the idea being at the end of their term as an employee they will have money saved up in account and we will help them to launch their own small business um, which will then be a business that can interact with with the uh, the business on Vorvoro, so maybe it's a uh, a chicken farm where they're raising chickens and selling the eggs to Vorvoro, so that the the kitchen ladies there can then you know use that to feed the travelers. So there's that kind of thing which will create sustainable businesses within the community where um, it won't just be this one island and this one family that's benefiting from it. Yet we can. Uh, create other situations where we can bring more of the uh, bring more of these businesses into a very local uh, situation there on on the island and the in the neighboring communities. Persistence <laughs> and patience, and um, I guess the other thing I would maybe want to say is that there's no shortage of ideas in the. Uh, of ideas to make the world a better place, but it's just a matter of putting those ideas into action and by supporting um, social enterprise. That's how we can do that, where everyone, um, well, those who have professional skills and would like to apply them in a way to a greater good can do that. Um, and we're in a crucial stage right now with, with our project in that we're getting our initial funding together. We've um, We've invested everything we have to get to this point, and, and now we need the backing so we can take it to the next level. So um, support social enterprise, and, um, and if you are a social enterprise, be persistent and patient. 